Many young people in China are writing their wills. A 17-year-old internet writer typed out his will late at night. Facing unemployment upon graduation, young adults are uncertain about their future. The pause button has been pressed on economic growth, silently widening the wealth gap. Data shows a dramatic increase in the number of people under 60 writing wills. Between 2017 and 2023, this number increased 24 times. The number of young people writing wills through WeChat mini-programs is astonishing. Among the 70,000 WeChat wills in 2023, those by people aged 30 or under accounted for as much as 60%. With people working in humane hours, sudden deaths in the workplace, and a rise in cancer cases, many young people are suddenly dying. A survey by the online medical service platform Dingxiang Doctor shows that about 60% of Gen Z and Gen Alpha are worried about death, more so than older people. As the pandemic rages, the economy declines, and unemployment rises, people's life paths are in chaos, not to mention various sudden disasters such as the Eastern Airlines crash, infrastructure collapses, earthquakes, etc., once again reminding people of the fragility of life. The turmoil in the socioeconomic sphere, the tension in East-West relations, also leave young people full of confusion and worries about the future. The shadow of war looms large, and peace and prosperity are no longer taken for granted. Young people in China are confronted daily with the impermanence of life and the absurdity of the world. Instead of worrying and fearing, it's better to be prepared. Liang, 17, is an internet writer who has been publishing since he was 14 and has a following. He has now written several online novels. He admits that he is under a lot of pressure usually and often stays up late to write. After seeing news of young people dying suddenly, he was deeply moved and came up with the idea of writing a will. At one in the morning, a young man who had worked for three years at a major internet company arrives home in Beijing. Lately, a thought has been lingering in his mind. Maybe one day he will also fall down without any warning, like those young people who died suddenly on the news. After taking a shower, he typed out a will on his computer, arranging his commercial insurance and property, and expressing gratitude and blessings to his parents. A flight attendant had a near-death experience during a flight. Although there was no real danger, she began to worry about what would happen to her mother and child if something really happened. She went to a will repository, consulted a lawyer, and wrote a will. Liang, the internet company employee, and the flight attendant were fortunate to have written their wills from a mindset of relative economic stability. However, there are many young people working in high-risk or high-pressure occupations who pass away before having the chance to write a will. Chronic sleep deprivation can seriously damage health, leading to fatal diseases such as heart disease, stroke, and even sudden death. A 21-year-old TikTok live streamer who had been staying up late for live broadcasts died of a sudden heart attack. A junior in college, after playing games live for nearly nine hours straight, died suddenly upon returning to his rental house. The 34-year-old internet celebrity, 3000 Brother, during a live drinking competition, drank about two kilograms of liquor and never woke up again. In today's job market, it's not uncommon for thousands of people to compete for one position, and college graduates' unemployment situation is becoming increasingly serious. To survive, these young people have to accept high-intensity work and stay up late working overtime for long periods. Even knowing that their health and lives may be in danger, they have no choice. Many employees in China's IT industry have written wills. The prevalent 996 work schedule in Chinese internet companies means working from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week. This schedule has led to frequent cases of death from overwork. Huawei has experienced several cases of employee deaths from overwork. In 2006, after a month of continuous overtime, R&D engineer Hu Xinyu passed away from viral encephalitis. In 2010, a Huawei employee died suddenly at the Shanghai World Expo News Center. In 2014, Wang Jin from the Wireless Chip Development Department of High Silicon, as well as a researcher from a supply chain at the Songshan Lake Base and a researcher from a research institute in the south, passed away successively. At the end of 2018, several engineers from Huawei's Kenya representative office, including Qi Zhiyong, died overseas from overwork.
A former Huawei employee said online that leaving Huawei was the right decision. Otherwise, he felt he would either die from overwork or completely ruin his health. According to statistics, China has up to 600,000 cases of deaths from overwork every year, surpassing Japan to become the world's largest country for deaths from overwork. In traditional Chinese culture, the unity of man and nature is a core value from ancient sages. This natural philosophy is a concept of balance. Nature will not squeeze a person dry as the modern economy has. More than a decade ago, Taiwan produced a documentary called Let It Be, which depicts the mindset of farmers who find joy despite failed harvests because they are doing what they believe is right. The rice from that Taiwanese farm is said to be delicious because of the farmer's mindset and their approach to their work. The culture under the Chinese Communist Party emphasizes materialistic values, viewing individuals as tools or resources rather than considering their spiritual well-being. This perspective is reflected in companies like Huawei, where employees earn high salaries but may feel that they are sacrificing their lives for money. Huawei is known for its aggressive corporate culture, often described as wolf-like, which can translate to treating employees as machines and disregarding fundamental principles of corporate culture and ethics. A similar phenomenon took place in the United States, where work culture prioritizes performance, stock market listings, market competition, and the bottom line. Later, Lehman Brothers, Citigroup, and the like ran into ethics issues, leading companies to reflect on corporate ethics. This led to the emergence of Corporate Social Responsibility, CSR. From product development to personnel management, consideration should be given to the protection, support, and respect for human rights. Among the Chinese people under 60 who have written wills, a large part of them are senior executives of state-owned enterprises, government officials, and experts in various industries. In recent years, reports of their deaths are frequent. According to the website of the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, Zhao Jiufang, a member of the party committee and secretary of the Discipline Inspection Commission of the company, died of a sudden heart attack on August 6 last year. He was 59. During the Shanghai lockdown in April 2022, 43-year-old Meng Qinggong, deputy chief designer of the COMAX CR929, suffered a heart attack and died. The lockdown prevented him from receiving medical treatment. On the evening of May 17 last year, the 711 Research Institute of China Shipbuilding Group announced the death of Li Jianming, a member of the party committee and the group's chief accountant. He died during a business trip at the age of 52. On May 25th last year, the National Satellite Ocean Application Center announced the death of Liu Jianqiang, deputy director and researcher of the Chinese Ministry of Natural Resources. He suddenly fell ill at a work meeting and died at the young age of 59. On July 1st last year, Feng Yanghe, a well-known expert in command and control and artificial intelligence in the Chinese military, died in a car accident while on a major mission in Beijing. Feng was only 38. Due to Feng Yanghe's special status, some netizens questioned whether this was simply a traffic accident. Doctors in mainland China are also among the young will writers. According to statistics, in 2017 alone, there were 31 cases of doctors' sudden deaths. A 31-year-old surgeon in Liuan City, Anhui Province, passed away after a long shift. An emergency department doctor at Qinghai University-affiliated hospital, after receiving 38 patients and working continuously for 18 hours, died after four hours of unsuccessful rescue. And another emergency department doctor at the age of 43, both passing away from overwork. A survey shows that Chinese physicians work an average of 51 hours per week, far exceeding the standard of 40 hours. Less than a quarter of physicians can take all their annual leave, and 4.4% of physicians say they don't know that they have annual leave. What's more infuriating is that authorities have held up these doctors as heroes to emulate. Many people sarcastically comment that the party members who tout this extreme work ethic should lead by example and drop dead. Some say that improving conditions is better than empty slogans. In 2024, the COVID-19 pandemic continues in China, and the CCP continues to cover up the severity. Some Chinese have told Chinese-language media overseas that sudden death has become commonplace. 
a deputy director of a branch of the Kunming Public Security Bureau, died suddenly of illness at work on January 15th at the age of 47. In Fuyuan County Public Security Bureau of Chujing City, Yunnan Province, a level 4 police officer died suddenly of illness on January 6th at the age of 37. At dawn, on February 8th, just before the Chinese New Year, a 41-year-old police officer named Li Haixiang from a police station in Nantong, Jiangsu Province, suddenly died in the office. A video circulated online shows Li Haixiang returning to his desk, looking at the computer, and suddenly collapsing in his seat. Netizens from Sichuan reveal that there are also middle-aged Communist Party members in the area who have died at their desks. Young people are writing wills partly because of property arrangements. Making money is not easy nowadays, and a large amount of wealth is monopolized by the communist aristocracy. The widening gap between rich and poor has led to a series of crises. One of them is the increasingly fierce competition for limited resources, leading people to resorting to dangerous means. A lawyer stated that he has seen many single people suddenly pass away, and the house should have been inherited by their parents, is taken away by bad actors by forging signatures or faking notarized wills. He advises young people that if they have a will, they should leave the house to their parents or children to avoid others stealing their property. A certain wealthy entrepreneur had only one daughter, who he showered with love and care. The daughter grew up and married a handsome man, and they had two children, leading a seemingly happy life. Before she married, the entrepreneur transferred all his company shares and the family's assets to his daughter. But one day, she died in a car accident. Because she did not write a will, according to China's current inheritance law, one-third of the property goes to parents, spouses, and children, respectively. As the children are young, her husband, as the children's sole guardian, will temporarily control these assets. Thus, the entrepreneur's son-in-law suddenly gained absolute control of his company. He kicked his father-in-law off the board of directors and remarried. This way, the company that the entrepreneur had operated for many years changed hands. While this is an extreme case, if a will had been written earlier, such risks would have been avoided. Of course, to fundamentally solve these problems, a fair, public-spirited, lawful, and orderly society needs to be built. However, this is impossible under the Chinese Communist Party. On the surface, young people writing wills seems like an economic or career issue, but it also reflects the deep dysfunction in Chinese society. In the past, competition in Chinese society was not as fierce, the cost of living was not as high, and ordinary people could also live well. However, after 40 years of rapid development, the Communist Party's plunder of social and natural resources, intensifying social competition, and widening wealth gap have made it much harder for ordinary people to achieve a life with a house and a car. Merely relying on beauty, education, or professional abilities is no longer enough. You also need complex social skills and workplace cunning. These are not things that can be learned in school, but are more influenced by family upbringing. Children from official, business, and merchant families are adept at these things, while those from ordinary families often find themselves at a disadvantage in this regard. They find that even if they work hard, it is difficult to achieve their dreams before they burn out. Many have reflected on their lives and written wills. In contemporary Chinese society, there are concerns regarding the prioritization of financial success over other values, potentially leading to the commodification of individuals and a disregard for human dignity and well-being. Gender dynamics also present challenges, with women sometimes being objectified and men feeling societal pressure to conform to certain roles. There is a pervasive belief that financial status is essential for survival, leading to a culture of intense work ethic and risk-taking. This emphasis on financial achievement can lead individuals to feel undervalued and disillusioned with societal expectations, prompting some to contemplate their life choices and consider writing a will. A 28-year-old tech worker suddenly suffered a cerebral infarction, his blood vessels having aged like those of someone in their 50s or 60s. The generation born after the economic reform has faced challenges such as food safety issues, environmental pollution, and heavy academic burdens, leading to lower physical fitness compared to previous generations. Many individuals in their golden age of 25 to 35 have experienced early signs of serious illness, such as premature graying, 
spine degeneration, and severe nearsightedness. Once they fall seriously ill, quality medical care is prohibitively expensive. Instead of spending all their wealth with uncertain outcomes, it is better to make a will in advance and leave the property to their parents and children. The generation born after 2000 is challenging traditional norms by opting for renting over home ownership, viewing marriage as optional, questioning the necessity of having children, and rejecting insincere social interactions. Gen Z has fundamentally changed the attitude towards work. Older generations would take leave to take care of family members. Gen Z would take leave when they themselves are ill. Gen Alpha do not reply to work messages after hours unless they're paid substantial overtime. This generation is quick-witted, articulate, and rejects the empty promises of leaders, challenging the rigid rules of the workplace with their actions. This generation is the first in more than 70 years of the Chinese Communist Party's rule to dare to choose their own life paths and live according to their own wishes. This makes them the most direct force challenging the existing social structure and the authority of the Communist Party, shaping an open and free society.